Bird Street. I'm going to give you a little tour of my little crafting space. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of some fabulous crafting studios and I have to say I'm really jealous because I don't have that kind of space. This right here is what I have to work with and it sits right next door to my equally small office. Yes, that actually is my office. So you can clearly see I haven't much to work with. But I thought I'd show you that if you have a small space to do your crafting and hobbies, it is possible. So let's go ahead and have a look at how I craft in my tiny space. The first thing I'm going to show you is this fabulous table. This is a solid wood table that came from Ikea. It's a gate leg table. So this uh, leg here swings in and this folds flat. So this table is actually only about that wide when it's folded. It has one of these wings on one side or these table... Um, pieces here and it's also got another one of the same size on the other side so I can actually move this whole table out and have this extended space in order to do large projects or cutting large pieces so the table ends up being about twice as big as it is right now typically though I leave it in this half position and this is where I do all of my hobbying whether it be sewing or I love to fish so if I'm working on my fishing tackle or I'm just making a meal because for me cooking is another one of my hobbies this right here is where I do it all let me go ahead and show you how I set my table up for crafting the first thing I do when I'm getting ready to craft is to go ahead and put up this piece of board that I have. I got it from the hardware store. It has chalkboard on one side and it's got pressed wood on the other side. The reason I really like this is not only does it protect the wood of my table while I'm working, but on this chalkboard surface I can go ahead and draw out my designs or a pattern or something that I have that I'm thinking of and put it right on this chalkboard. Then I can go ahead and use my scissors to cut it out or I can just take a picture of it with my phone and use it to build my pattern later. So I really love this. I don't use my rotary cutter directly on this, just so you know. When I am ready to go ahead and move on and do my work, I turn it over to the pressed wood side or the pressed board side, and on that, I can do whatever crafting I like, or if I'm gonna cut something, I can go ahead and put my Fiskars self-healing mat this particular mat is 18 inches by 24 inches. It's a good size mat. I could probably use a little larger one, but this is what I have for now. And this is pretty much how I set the table up before I begin to do my crafting. So when I'm ready to do my sewing, I actually place my sewing machine right over here, and it leaves me all of this surface space to be able to still work on, so I can do whatever I'm doing here, go over to the sewing machine, do my sewing, come back here, do my cutting or whatever I need to do, and not move the sewing machine from its position, which is really great. When I need to press something, or if I'm doing work that requires a lot of pressing, I actually have this quilted uh, quilter square and blocker, and this is where I can do all of that work. I can leave it here while I'm working, sew something, come over, press it, go back to the sewing machine, and just leave everything all in place. So even though I don't have a lot of space, I can still get everything I need to get done in this small area. So now that I have my small work area kind of all set up and um, put together in a way that works for me, you might be thinking, well, what about tools and storage for your items? Well, that's where it gets a little tricky. You have to sort of be firm with yourself when you have a small space about what you can have and how you can keep that. So what I've done is I've dedicated the top shelf of my hall closet to my storage and crafting items. Whatever doesn't fit on that top shelf, I don't get to keep. So what I have is I have four totes of this size. Two of them are dedicated to sewing and two of them are dedicated to general crafting. This particular one is a sewing one and it does hold fabric. This is all fabric that I have ideas for. They're all pre-washed and they're labeled with what my thoughts are about what I wanted to do with that fabric. Because I'm in a small space, I really don't have space to just buy fabric I like and just keep it somewhere. Um, it would be a luxury. I'd love to do that. But I have to buy fabric that I have a plan for. Then I have another one here for sewing. Hold some patterns that I'm wanting to work with, some interfacing and different things like that as far as what I need to work with this. Now the nice thing about these, these are made by Sterilite, is a lot of their pieces are modular. So this is a storage tote that fits perfectly right inside that groove and I actually have two of these, one again for sewing and one for crafting. What I use this one for is this is my sewing box. It has four trays so that I can see clearly what's inside each of my trays. The latches are really firm so it's not going to fall apart and um, break on you. It's not too wide 
and this is narrow enough that it can fit easily where under your chair or wherever when you're working so I really um, like this um, it's ideal for me and whatever sewing tools I need I can put in there sewing tools that don't fit in here don't get to be a part of my sewing collection so it's um, a little bit hard sometimes to keep yourself in check but really everything you need to do your job can fit in there so hopefully you've kind of gotten the idea that even if you have a smaller space and you don't have the luxury of a great big studio you can still do what you need to work just by being a little bit thoughtful about how you set yourself up and being a little bit firm with yourself about what you can have and what you can store <music>